All right. Thanks. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week and it will be posted to our website for you to watch later. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can um, access all of our archives. Um, we post both the uh, recording of the show and any um, presentations, handouts, anything. So the slides you see that our presenter today has, those will be included as well um, on the archive page afterwards. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, um, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, pretty much runs the gamut here. Our only real criteria for our show is that it's something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing, um, services or products or things that we offer here through the Nebraska Library Commission, um, very broad. So you will find things on our show and in our archives for uh, public libraries, academic, corrections, K-12, museums, anything that's a library, we're all about it. <laughs> um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on sometimes to talk about things that we're doing here, but we also have guest speakers that come in sometimes, as we have, and that's what we have this morning. Uh, this morning with us is Duran, Duran Avey. Good morning, Duran. Good morning. There, all right. Uh, your camera view went away. Yeah, I don't. It's spinning. It's spinning. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, there it is. Okay. Oops. Did it come back? Oh, did briefly. There we go. <laughs> Just needed a minute to think, I guess. <laughs> all, right. all right. So with us this morning, there she is, <laughs> is Doran Avey, who is um, from the Nebraska Department of Education, the digital learning director there. And um, she's going to talk to us about Future Ready Nebraska and what's going on with this whole program that's been um, around for a, a little bit now and getting yeah. really up to speed, I think. Yeah, so Future Ready has been around for just a little bit over a year. Um, it's one of the uh, big projects that we're doing here at the Nebraska Department of Education. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. In addition, um, I am also the school librarian's um, content specialist here at NDE. So if you're a school librarian and you ever have any questions or anything I can help you with, feel free to also contact me. Um, the slides are being shared, but you can also, if you want to follow along, jump to that bit.ly. Um, know that the capitalization does matter for those bit.ly addresses, so be sure to capitalize NEB for Nebraska and the L in librarians. Okay, whoops, there we go. So today I really want to tell you a little bit about the Future Ready Framework. It's something that's kind of new to Nebraska. Um, we're going to talk about the work that we've been doing for just a little bit over a year um, around that framework. Um, then we're going to get specific into some uh, Future Ready Librarians goals. We do have a Future Ready group here uh, made up of school librarians and pre-service librarian leaders. Um, that um, also are doing some behind the scenes work. Um, in case you didn't know, Rule 10, which governs school um, accreditation and um, has some rules around librarians and media specialists. And so that is currently open for review and revision. Um, and we're working on that. So I want to share some of the work that we've um, done with that. And then let you know um, about a new conference that we're starting to offer for the first time ever in Nebraska. Um, it'll be open to everyone. Um, in June. So uh, what is Future Ready and why did we choose it? Well, Future Ready was um, started by the Obama administration um, and it was a way for the Office of Educational Technology to um, provide resources. It is now a nonprofit um, and we chose it because of its all-encompassing viewpoint around technology um, within schools and within school districts as a, as a framework that we felt was easily understandable and also um, comprehensive enough that all it would prepare all school districts um, for kind of the future of learning and we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. There are um, over 30 states that have adopted Future Ready Schools projects and districts um, and all of those have also signed up to be a Future Ready District and you can kind of see the breakdown for the types of districts that are involved um, but it is meant to be um, 
a system in which all types of districts can um, use the framework and also benefit um, from some of its work. I did include this uh, is a live link and um, you're welcome to look at it, but it does have um, the Future Ready Schools National Site does have a lot of really great resources, especially for librarians. So um, Future Ready Librarians, the national group is a very robust group and they provide probably more resources than any of the other groups um, and supports and professional development. Um, and so if you're ever looking for information um, related to their work, you can go to that hub and, and check that out. In addition, um, they have summits all around the country and we are offering our first one in Nebraska this summer. Um, it does have a free planning dashboard that districts can sit down uh, with a group of folks and go through and make um, planning around all things education uh, related to digital learning and ed tech um, and see where they're at and make plans for how to advance in the future. Um, and then there are some micro credentials that you could also pursue or seek out through the program. Future Ready Nebraska, I, I put the link here in the top if you want to take a look at it. We did create uh, a, four, a little over 40 page document that is the first ever uh, Future Ready PK through 20 um, digital learning plan for the state of Nebraska. Uh, we built that just over a year ago and released it. It is a three year plan um, that hopes to move forward um, digital learning in the state of Nebraska. Um, since we knew, you know, most likely people wouldn't read the 40 pages, um, we created a website that's very interactive and you can look just by gear, you can look at the goals specifically, you can see progress made towards the goals um, and get information about specifically what we plan to do um, in the state of Nebraska. In addition, when we built that plan, it was really important for us to kind of tie that to other initiatives that schools are either required to um, participate in or um, our guidelines we have to at NDE participate in and we tried to tie everything together to make the work um, as seamless as possible so you could integrate it into multiple things that might be happening within your school district or um, within your school building um, itself. So when you look at the Future Ready vision and goals, you'll see everything is aligned to the State Board of Education's goals, um, ESSA and our statewide planning goals, the AQUEST system and its tenants, um, as well as the National Education Technology Plan. So you'll see little icons um, in there and it explains on the website how to read so you can see which goals um, fulfill some of those other missions as well. Um, the biggest reason why we moved to this was we needed to um, break down some of the silos around technology. There were lots of things happening in technology, but it wasn't expanding any further than small silos or areas, uh, which was creating some inequity um, for digital learning across the state. And that was something that we wanted to help increase. Um, collaboration around so that we could expand some of those really great things that are happening further um, across the state. So that that's really what our hope in adopting the Future Ready concept um, and using it to, to provide guidance. Um, the, the Future Ready plan is kind of basically made up of like seven gears, they call them gears, around different um, portions of digital learning. Um, and they include the list there. Um, the biggest area for librarians is the first one, that curriculum instruction and assessment. And we'll talk specifically around goals for librarians um, related to this um, a little bit later. The whole goal, though, is to really get to both collaborative leadership and then student personal learning, um, as well as personalized learning for professionals um, as well. So you'll see some things related to those um, occurring within the plan for the statewide vision. The statewide vision was built by the Future Ready Nebraska Council. Um, this is a statewide group membership and on the website you can see um, all of the original members. We also have some new members, um, but um, it's a subset of superintendents, um, educators, ESU PD folks, um, librarians, all sorts of individuals came together to help us write and build the plan um, and we used their goals 
um, to build and action steps to build that out. When you look at the, the plan um, on the website, you'll see um, if, that as you look, the integration was really, really important. And you can see that there are so many things that are tied to other work that schools are usually working on. So for example, for ESSA, there are 28 goals and action steps um, that we put into the state plan that really align with meeting and achieving um, the goals of the ESSA state plan um, that districts will need to provide feedback to us um, so that we can provide feedback to the federal um, Department of Education as well. So there's lots of things in there that are really tied. We, we didn't want this to be one extra thing school districts needed to do. We wanted them to see how the work in digital learning and ed tech can uh, move them forward towards all different types of goals um, that they might be working on. Uh, when you look, you'll see these uh, icons next to a goal. So if you see the icon for AQuest, you'll know that that is a action step or goal that is directly tied to an AQuest tenant that can be used when you're presenting information to the Department of Education related to AQuest um, and showing achievement towards those tenants. So um, all of the different icons are within the plan. From a Federal viewpoint, this is kind of a high um, high view of each gear and kind of what they're meant to do. And then we'll, we'll look specifically at how that relates to the library uh, and librarians here in a minute. The, the main thing about the budget and resources gear was really to um, do a better job with our E-rate reimbursement, reimbursement and providing training and making sure that all districts were um, getting the funding that they deserved um, to help schools access uh, grants and budget um, funds that we could provide, that the feds might provide, that um, other grants might provide, so that we could make sure that we had sustainable models for technology. A lot of times school districts would have money up front for a project, but wouldn't have ongoing money um, for replacement materials, for ongoing costs, um, for training and those kinds of things. And so we really wanted to build a plan that helped districts vision um, and include budget um, to support the work. Um, a good portion of the Future Ready uh, Partnerships gear is really looking at, at what you have available in your state and outside the state um, and partnerships that you can build to have successful collaboration around digital learning. Um, and the plan helps to provide tools to districts on how to reach out. Um, it provides resources um, like letters um, and things like that to start to build um, some of these community partnerships, both locally and long um, and nationally, potentially, depending on what products you're interested in or what work you're needing assistance with. The other part of this is also uh, working more with the um, higher education institution so that um, we have a long term um, vision of what students need to know and should be able to do with technology in addition to what future teachers should know and be able to do with technology. And so we're working in those areas as well. Um, curriculum instruction and assessment is one of the biggest things because it, it, it's really the heart of what school um, is about and all things that take place. So there are lots of goals in this, this area, um, specifically around providing PD, providing quality digital content tools and resources. We know we have an equity gap in the prices that districts are paying for the same products across our state, depending on their size. Um, and we wanna see what we can do as a state to help minimize some of that and provide products um, at a little bit better prices for all districts um, so that together um, those products that we deem um, a high need um, can be provided to everyone and not just the few that can afford it. Um, the data and privacy gear is really focused um, on understanding all of the laws, COPPA, FERPA, and HIPAA um, that have been mandated to school districts and how it relates to your digital components, um, whether it's the applications that you're sharing with students or having students use, whether it's how you house or store your student data, all of those things um, 
can be confusing for districts. They don't always have the personnel to spend a lot of time looking at these laws and making sure. And so we are trying to provide some tools back to districts and some training around uh, what districts should be doing to help protect student and also staff privacy uh, within that law. Personalized professional development is really looking at um, ways that we can provide personalized learning for educators and um, stakeholders in this in the school districts um, in a way that meets their needs. Sometimes it's about time and providing it in a timely manner. Sometimes it's um, about providing more face-to-face -face opportunities. Um, it can be a variety of things, um, but we're building partnerships to kind of bring all of those things to the table so that districts can expand the learning opportunities to their staff. Um, and we have lots of different ways that we are working on that, and I'll share a few of those today. The Future Ready uh, Robust Infrastructure Gear. In Nebraska, we're, we're pretty fortunate. We are one of the most advanced states due to our, our Network Nebraska initiative and providing fiber to all of our school districts around the state. Um, and many states don't do this yet, and there are still schools that don't have internet access uh, due to their location within a state. Uh, in Nebraska, this is pretty limited, but our goal here isn't so much about access at school, but now we're focused on trying to get access to students outside of the classroom um, and ways that we can bring um, some equity in that homework gap so that students that um, don't always have access at home have other methods for accessing the internet to do schoolwork. Um, and there's several initiatives going on there that I'll share with you. And then the last gear is the use of space and time. It's, it's really about thinking less about seat time and more about student achievement um, and and looking more at what students can demonstrate in their learning versus the number of minutes um, in which they sit and attend um, to classes. And so this really kind of gets to the heart of personal learning and, and allowing students that are ready to move on and allowing students that need additional assistance to, to get that assistance to help um, move them forward. And so this is kind of looking at education um, in a lot of different ways. It can also just be as simple as um, doing flipped or blended learning, providing other opportunities to extend the learning. Um, so there are lots of things that happen in this space to kind of move <laughs> students forward in use of space and time. So the current year, um, this is the work that we have done um, that's tied to the goal. So we've been doing presentations like this to let folks know that we do have a statewide plan. Many states have had statewide plans for um, many, many years. Um, and this is the first one that we've put together for the state of Nebraska to kind of help um, guide everyone and move everyone kind of forward from where they're at, including um, the Department of Education. Um, we've also, um, purchased and have begun work on a, a Nebraska OER Commons um, hub and that is up and running. It's live. You can join it today. Um, it's at the oercommons.org website. And if you look under hubs, you'll see a Nebraska one there. It's completely free. We're doing lots of training around um, that work. We're also using librarians a lot for that work and moving that work forward because there's um, <laughs> definitely a need for copyright, um, fair use, and um, commons licensing information that teachers don't have or that they have incorrect information on, on what that means to them. Um, and that's information we need to really share to make our OER hub work um, and to make sure people understand what kinds of materials can be put in there, um, saved and shared, and then how they can save and share those items. And so we've been doing a lot of training around that. We're really using a lot of the librarians to help with that work. Uh, Durant. Um, yeah, Grant, I do have actually a comment about that. We're actually doing having an upcoming Encompass Live show is going to be about that. Oh, wonderful! Um, on uh, where's my date here? April t April tenth. Um, Beth Cabish from um, <laughs> ES uh, Coordinating Council is going to be with yeah. us to talk about OER. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, Beth and I have been presenting all over about that as well. So yeah. I'm glad that I would definitely recommend it um, because it's going to be one of the biggest projects for librarians to be a part of in the district as we move districts yeah. into this space. Yeah, do a thing about, you know, specifically for people who aren't sure, like you're saying, what is OER? What is it all about? <laughs> and then about the hub that you guys are part of. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So if you want more about that, look on our schedule, April 13th. They get the right April 10th. I'm sorry. 10th. April 10th. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Yes, I definitely recommend that you do that, especially if you don't, if you haven't worked a lot with open education resources or the repository itself. So definitely take a look at that. Um, we're also with Beth actually um, doing the blend ed uh, cohorts. So we have uh, cohort one, which ended last year, um, was a blended ed pilot project and this year we are on to cohort two uh, working with teachers on implementing blend ed programs um, and that is another ESUCC project that's tied to our future ready work. Um, single sign-on is something that we've added at most districts. ESUs are, are really implementing this for many of the districts and some of the larger districts already had it or implemented it themselves, but this provides one sign-on for students and staff um, which accesses all of the applications that a district might um, have access to or needs for. And so um, it makes it makes the work of digital learning a lot easier when students don't have to remember a lot of different passwords and logins. It also helps teachers who also uh, then don't have to remember or reset students' um, logins and passwords all the time. Um, the advisor dashboard has also been part of this work and this is mostly um, done through your district office where they upload their um, systems and information each school year to our advisor dashboard for upload to the Fed. But in addition, the advisor dashboard um, is designed to provide teachers with um, statewide data about their students. So students that are migrants, students that um, have been in more, more than one districts. Um, it is, gives us the ability to keep track of that student's information and data and share it um, throughout the entire state, which um, they're finishing up that project and continuing to work on that. The IMLS Sparks Grant is a grant, again, working on that providing infrastructure to students outside of the school day. Um, so we had five public libraries and schools um, that partnered this year um, to provide internet service that comes directly from the school into the local public libraries um, and that would allow students who are using the library's network system to access all of their school applications um, and information using the internet through through the library um, and we hope to expand on that we should be getting an update on how that project is going that just started this year um, with our goal of seeing if that does help bring students in um, and provide them a place that they can get access where they might not have it at home. Um, as part of LB 994, uh, we do still have the Rural Broadband Task Force there working to continue to improve the infrastructure um, within our districts and providing uh, better connections and connectivity. Um, we did rewrite the district technology plan. We called it, um, now it's called the district technology profile. It used to be a federal requirement um, in order to get E-rate funds, but we it was a little outdated. <laughs> um, so we updated it, we brought it to make it a little bit more current, and we're actually now going to share that data out through the Nebraska Education Portal, which is a site connected to the NDE website where you can get student demographic data, teacher, data um, about a district, statewide information about um, how the state of schools are doing, how many total students we have, those kinds of things. Now we're also going to be including some statewide technology information, what LMSs are being used, um, what types of machines, how many schools have one-to-one -one, um, programs so that students are taking machines, those kinds of things. All of that will also now be shared back out where before we just gathered the data, but it was never really shared back out with stakeholders or schools. And so um, we're providing that information 
this spring for the first time that technology profile just closed in February. So we're now cleaning the data and preparing it for um, updating the NEP site. So if you're, you're curious about any of those things, you'll be able to find it. Then uh, rule 10 um, has been opened for the, it'll be open another 18 months before it will be completely fish, finished. Uh, rule 10 is being updated in all areas and as part of that work, um, the Future Ready Council has identified some things that they would like to see either clarified or changed in order to make digital learning and ed tech uh, work a little bit better in school districts um, and um, provide some wiggle room um, for schools to try to pilot and do some things um, that are um, innovative around digital learning. And so we're working um, with the policymakers here to get those rewrites considered. Um, we did join a national consortium for student data privacy and ESU3 is currently out um, leading the charge on this and training district tech folks. So your technology, um, district technology specialists would know a lot about this. Um, but basically the consortium is um, being provided to all school districts free of charge. Um, and it provides information around student data privacy. It provides information around applications and what applications follow um, the law um, in a way that the law is interpreted so that you're not violating and which applications schools should avoid um, using or having students use because they are in violation of student data privacy. Um, so that's another tool that's going out. And again, mostly through the technology um, person at your district, um, but that training is uh, started this beginning in January is when we purchased that consortium. Um, and so you should hear more about that in the next year. And then we're also piloting um, a potential statewide learning management system. It is Canvas based. Um, our hope is that we can have our own state iteration of this so that we could provide that as a product to all school districts at a very, very low cost and save some of the districts that are paying high per student costs some money, um, but still allow them to have a high quality um, learning management system. So those are some of the fun little um, activities that are that are occurring right now throughout the state related to future ready and that come from the future ready funding and, and plans. Really, our goal a question yes. that someone has that um, they asked that I'm not sure if you're going to get into the more details of it, but I figured I'd throw it out right now. Mm -hmm. Talk about what you're doing and um, getting the students access at home and and you know when they're outside of the library. And um, so someone wants to know is is funding for one to one technology for schools part of this effort? So. Um, Access to funding is part of the effort and we, you know, Nebraska is a very local control state, so we don't like to tell people what to do, but we would highly encourage and give a wealth of information about how to access funds that, yes, could provide one-to-one -one initiatives. In addition, looking at putting Wi-Fi on buses, um, especially in rural areas where students spend a lot of time on them um, is part of that that piece and that work in providing funding for districts to also do that. So that, that yes, is part of it. Um, that was another reason we needed to do the district technology profile is we weren't sure where we were at as a state as to how many districts are already in a one-to-one -one environment and right. at what grade levels. Um, and so once we have that data, we'll be able to provide uh, more information to specific districts um, that might need assistance in moving into that space. But definitely that is a goal. You're still collecting the data on that, then we're not sure who is going. We haven't gathered in total who's doing it already or who needs to. Yeah. Right. No, we just closed that in February. So we're just now uh, getting all of that data analyzed. So we will know in a couple months. Um, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, and we'll be sharing it out too. So others will know what percentage of school districts have one to one programs and things like that. And then from there, we can better uh, look at innovation grant funds and things like that to help move. Um, districts forward in that space. But definitely it is a goal because with personalized learning, having a one-to-one -one environment is really important. Yes, yes, great. 
Thanks. Um, yeah, so on here, I'm not going to show this video, but this was a news story that CBS did recently, just this last fall on personalized learning. And it shows the thing I like about this is it shows a small rural district in Idaho. Um, 1,700 people live in this and um, in the city or the town, and um, they switched to personalized learning. They kind of show you how it how it benefited them, how it, they were one of the lowest scoring school districts and how they have moved forward um, in growth uh, towards better test scores and things like that. Um, and also just engagement of students and getting students to come to school. So it's it's kind of a quick video. Um, you're welcome to check it out. But um, the thing I like is that it's not just about the big districts. It, it shows how small districts can use personalized learning. Okay, so future ready librarians in Nebraska. Um, so we have a committee um, of both small school district librarians and our large, our two largest districts, LPS and OPS, um, have come together. We also have some ESU representation, and then the Dr. Becky Pasco from UNO is also helping us in some of the work around how to move librarians and their work. Um, forward in the state. You can see a list there of some of the things that they're working on. I mentioned the OER, but they're also working on um, some digital fluency, which used to be called like digital citizenship and then digital um, information and just the, all of those kinds of words all compassed into one um, and trying to provide lessons and lesson plans to help librarians um, in that work. Um, we're also working with the Nebraska Library Commission, so we have a member of the Nebraska Library Commission on our Future Ready Nebraska Librarians group um, and trying to provide both professional development, um, trying to do some joint projects, so we have some exciting things there. Um, we're working on beefing up um, the website for Nebraska librarians um, and providing resources that they might need. In addition to um, some information for new librarians, we have a lot of um, librarians that are retiring from school districts and a lot of new younger ones um, that have a lot of questions um, and we're trying to provide them a toolkit to help them move and be successful um, uh, librarians at their school districts. So some work there. Um, I also linked the frame, the national framework for librarians specific, so you can see kind of what work we're framing the Nebraska work off of, um, and I'm going to kind of go over that next. So um, this is what the Future Ready Librarians um, framework looks like. It, it uses, again, all of the same gears, but they have a little bit different goals um, and the way that the goals work for, for each um, of those gears is a little bit different. You'll also see on the curriculum instruction and assessment, that light blue, that, that the edge of that goes out quite a bit further. Most of the goals um, and the taglines for the work for Future Ready Librarians is in this area. Um, and so I'll show you some sample work that's taking place, some ideas around how librarians can, can use the framework to advance work at their own uh, library. Um, this is the back side of that handout. If you if you clicked on the link, um, it kind of shows all of the different taglines. You can see there's three of the light blue ones there. And then it, it goes a little bit deeper to explain what kind of outcomes um, that they want to see coming out of um, the library or the, from the librarians in support of their school. Um, and so we're going to take a look at each of these and, and see how this looks um, day to day. So we'll start with the curriculum and instruction. There are three things that really um, work around this that the librarians can help and assist their district in. One is building some instructional partnerships with themselves and, and teachers, um, empowering students to be creators. And we've seen a, a massive move in the makerspace um, realm in the libraries and libraries really kind of leading the charge around um, maker spaces and then of course the curation of digital resources and tools which is a little bit different than print curation um, that most people think librarians do um, all the time and that's all they do <laughs> um, and trying to show how they can be helpful around the digital space as well so what you might see um, some sample strategies that school districts in Nebraska 
um, are using or librarians are using is you might see some collaborative Skypes or Zooms with classes and libraries in other schools. Um, you might see librarians meeting regularly with teachers to plan. Um, you might see them working um, and providing all of the digital fluency or digital citizenship lessons and setting up planning sessions um, that match to maker spaces that they've created uh, within the library. Um, you might also see um, students doing more work in the library, um, whether it's doing video book talks, working on their digital portfolios, um, working on STEAM activities. Again, a lot of times those are in the makerspace section um, of the library um, and, and really making a, a focused maker program. So not just things that look fun and are fun to do, but also helping students tie the makerspace back to the standards that they're responsible for in the variety of classes that they, they attend. And so making those connections for students. Um, around digital resources, we see the use a lot of symbols um, around content areas and things. Uh, the librarian builds these. They provide access um, and links to the resources to help move the teacher forward in a certain area that maybe they're not as strong in or maybe the textbook that they're using is not as strong in. Um, some ideas that are currently mostly in the symbols are coding. There's a lot around computer science. Uh, making digital citizenship, all of those things. They also um, are helping teachers with blogs and curating resources together within those blogs for classrooms, um, using YouTube channels, teaching teachers about how to create a YouTube channel of their own, keeping playlists for both the teachers um, and the students, but also even for parents um, and providing training in that realm um, to help parents work with their students at home. And then, of course, a collection of uh, virtual field trips or VFTs. We have several in Nebraska, um, and we're trying to, again, provide more information around those and what ones tie to specific standards, state standards uh, within the course content. Um, professional learning, a lot of librarians are asked to do this more and more, especially around technology resources. Um, and so some things that you might see them doing is actually teaching a professional development course for their district around a specific topic, um, working with them to on the machines with their either the students' devices um, or the teacher devices sometimes as well, in addition to helping assist parents um, as school districts go one-to-one -one and familiarize them with the devices and helping their student manage the device and care for the device. Um, and then also help them get unstuck when the device um, is not functioning properly. Um, they also are building some of our OER training, especially around the copyright, creative commons, and fair use. Um, they're also helping assist um, us in building the um, tags, metadata tags that we're using for searching so that we can easily find materials. Um, and so they, they are assisting in that work as well. And then, of course, you always um, have the opportunity to present. You're welcome to present at our, our um, conference this summer if you have a hot topic that you'd like to share out um, with others or an idea or a plan around any of these future writing gears, you're welcome to submit a proposal for that and share with others. To help communi community partnerships, um, we suggest um, and some districts have done digital literacy nights for the community and parents. Um, this is a hot topic because of all the different things going on in the digital space, um, both positive and negative. And so it helps um, to share information with those that maybe don't know or understand technology as well. Um, we've seen people work with college art departments to showcase student artwork um, and do partnerships there presenting at a school board meeting, whether it's about OER, digital resources, any of those things, and then social media um, and sharing how to use those tools in an educational setting um, as well. Uh, the infrastructure, making sure we have equitable access is the ultimate goal, um, and so some different things. Um, we do have school districts that have hotspots that are available for checkout. Um, 
to staff um, and for student use outside of the day in addition to what we talked a little bit about Wi-Fi on buses and, and making those things available. So those are available for checkout through usually the library. Um, promoting OER and using OER among students and staff. Um, doing some curriculum on the wall uh, within the library. So again, making connections between maker spaces and, and work going on in classrooms or vice versa. And then flexing their media center hours um, to provide for more availability for students and parents either before school or after school or on specific days like conferences and, and um, other events uh, where community is coming to your space. Um, some data and privacy work that's occurring. Um, we have some, again, parent training on privacy, and we have a lot of tools through Common Sense Media um, that you can provide out uh, regular or weekly lessons on digital citizenship. Um, this is a, a embedded usually within content areas like social studies and, and places like that, English, um, but just instead of getting it in one lump one time at trying to organize your district's plan so that this work is embedded throughout a student's time with your district um, so they're getting regular information and updates that are appropriate for their age. Um, teaching students and also staff members how to create strong passwords. They can remember we have a lot of training going on around that. Um, it helps to have one-to-one -one, but um, for personal use as well. It, it um, helps if students understand how to do these things and how to make them memorable. And then modeling digital citizenship in collaborations, helping others um, to see how to best, especially teachers, model good use of uh, digital tools and resources. For budget, you have, I know librarians do not have large, large budgets. <laughs> and so we have to be careful with our budgets. Um, and some libraries have reached out um, with permission. You have to get sometimes permission from your district to do things like title wish or Amazon wish list or first books. Some people still do the corporate um, book buys and things like that. And those all work really great. Um, using more free materials through OER is also helpful. Um, investing and convincing your school to invest in maker studio items. Again, it helps a lot if it's tied to content because then you can also use department funding or curriculum funding to um, purchase and get those materials um, and make them available because it does tie to a learning goal. Um, and then we also have some folks that are looking at augmented reality and apps um, as a makerspace or a station that students can uh, learn from and use within the library space. And then use of space and time in the library again, reevaluating your makerspace design. Uh, where you have it placed, um, changing the library when you can to get, use shorter, more mobile bookcases versus the tall um, built-in so that you have flexibility in moving and uh, seating and space use within the space, uh, making sure signage um, is available in all areas and clear to make it easy to locate things that are occurring in the library now that there's so much more going on, um, and creating a functional classroom area um, is important so that librarians can assist in co-teaching, especially around the digital citizenship and, and research and all of those wonderful things. Um, and so being able to move the space um, and making the space adaptable is something that uh, we see in a lot of new libraries and then older libraries are doing over time um, with small purchases and, and ideas and planning. So rule, rule 10 is another large piece of um, the work that's going on in the next year. Um, and so some changes that we have kind of embedded um, or are requesting, again, all we can do is ask for these changes, um, really are around some clarification um, and some safety issues that we, and just misunderstanding um, as well. So um, currently each school building does have to have a library open the entire school day. Um, 
that is part of the rule. It's not super clear, but it is part of the rule. Um, they do have to be have materials cataloged and shelved. They have to have one set of encyclopedias, which the Library Commission provides through Nebraska Access. So uh, you don't you shouldn't have to pay for that because um, it can be digital or print. And since they provide a digital one, we highly recommend that you use that um, and use their resources there. Um, each elementary school currently has to have the 25 resources per teacher per year up to 150. Uh, we are looking at modifying that. Um, the other thing about the school being building, having a library open is that it doesn't say it has to be staffed and we are discovering that many districts in their efforts to cut expenses are leaving these spaces open so the doors are unlocked but there are no adults. Uh, within this space, um, either helping students nor are they monitoring students. And so we've requested a change that it, it does need to be staffed by an adult. Um, and so whether that's your library para or the actual librarian um, varies, but that it's just not um, an open space um, where students are not cared for. Um, and we are looking at increasing the minimum um, up to 200 titles. Um, again, this is a change uh, to all three grade level, or all three sets, elementary, middle, and high school. We are looking to eliminate the periodicals. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find appropriate periodicals for students um, and many periodicals for research and evaluation projects are available again through the Nebraska Library Commission um, and so we're looking to eliminate the requirement of having those subscription and instead um, putting that money into more resources for uh, that are digital in format and available to students. Um, we, we are still um, we, you know, we currently have a an endorsement. We have two of them technically, um, and a library media specialist has to either have already earned the endorsement or be working at six hours uh, credit hours earned per year to be working. There was some confusion in that the word technology was placed in the rule at some time, and so people thought their technology endorsement allowed them to. Um, work as a library media specialist, and that is not the case. Um, school districts that are doing that are in violation um, and could have their accreditation dinged. So we are working to correct that and to make sure that everybody has the proper endorsements. Um, and then staffing is defined within Rule 10. We're looking to um, increase that um, a little bit in that mostly the math doesn't work very well because you have to the way that the rule is written, um, you have to have somebody there um, a quarter of the time. Every district has to have at least a quarter time, um, every district, but each building has a different requirement. And so the time frames um, and dividing um, was not specified by building. So we're looking more at, at saying that the buildings, um, not just the district, have to have access to a media center. We have some districts where a student in K-5 never sees a library media specialist because they only have one for their whole district and they're in the middle school, high school building instead. And so we want to make some corrections um, there. Um, there is um, some a summary there that you can take a look at um, to see the some of the proposed changes. We're still working on this document, so you're welcome to email me if you have some ideas or thoughts on like what you would like to see within Rule 10. Um, like I said, we still have over a year left um, to do this, and if you'd like um, to take a look at the most recent revision, you can email me at any time, and I'm happy to share that, but we are still kind of working out the kinks and the details um, on how we can better improve the services that school districts um, are providing through their library media service um, and building libraries as well. So, um, any questions on Rule 10? I, I suppose there might be. 
Um, nobody has typed in anything. Okay. But anybody, if you have any questions or any more clarification you want on Rule 10, obviously it's something that is very important in the schools. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm very surprised to hear that you, you said about um, they have a library, but they just leave it open with no staff, no adult supervision. Yeah. I'm surprised that schools would go for letting I, when wild. I heard that, I, yeah, I thought the same thing. The students even self check out, so there's just a little scanner there, and they trust huh. the kids to self check out and check well, in. It's nice, it's nice to have that honor system trust going, yeah. But it, the, it really is, it really is, um, until you know a, a tragedy occurs and then the right. students are trapped without any adult assistance. <laughs> And if they need to do any actual research and they need the research assistance, there's nobody. Right. There's nobody there to help them. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. And and that's one of those things is the way the rule is written, it's allowable. And so then districts, yeah. when they're looking at cutting, that's one of the things that they considered. So like you said, we wouldn't have thought of that, but now that we know, we're gonna try to fix that. Right. Yeah, didn't think about it in the origin originally, yeah. Yeah, so the last um, couple things I have for you, um, there is, like I mentioned, the first ever Future Ready Nebraska conference. So um, like I said, there's been Future Ready summits and conferences all across the country, but we've never had one in Nebraska before. Um, it is tied to the Southeast Nebraska Ed Tech Conference, which um, has been occurring every year uh, for ESUs um, three and four, no, four and five, sorry, four and five. Um, and they've collaborated each year to, pr to bring this to folks. Um, and now we're expanding it and providing it as a future ready um, conference and we're making it open to the whole state. It will take place in Lincoln, um, most likely at Southwest High School here in Lincoln. Um, and so if you're interested, I included the flyer so you can see the dates and the different strands. Librarians will have a strong strand there and they will have their own um, kind of sequence of um, information that will pr be provided specifically for librarians. So um, if you're looking for a conference that's really tied to what you do, um, this one should be a strong one for you. In addition, I provided the link if you're interested in um, presenting at the conference or just signing up and, um, and coming to the conference, you can see um, all of the information pricing. Uh, we are recommending schools bring teams. It becomes very, very cheap. I mean, I think it's down to like $30, $30 per day for people um, if you bring a, a team in. Um, but uh, take, take a time to check that out and see if those dates will work for you. We would love to have you come out um, and be a part of this conference. We are having some national speakers and the Nebraska Teacher of the Year will be there and um, many, many others will be providing more details around kind of all of the things that I shared with you today. And looking at the site, it looks like the call for proposals is still open too. Yes, yes, you have until, I think it's April. First. Yeah. It's the first on the site, so. Yeah, and, you and mentioned as well. Or anything yeah. is a good place, a good uh, to do that. Anything yeah. yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in the library commission, is also welcome and, and to bring and provide information as well. We have a couple of days, um, and we hope to have kind of give them their own space so that there'll be like a room or two that everything is related to libraries. So that's our goal. Um, on the next slide, I do have some other links that you might find helpful. As I mentioned before, the Future Ready Librarians National Group is just phenomenal and they provide so many um, resources in different ways. One is their Facebook page, which um, you may or may not like Facebook, but their Facebook page is incredible and has a wealth of resources and information. They also have a Twitter feed um, that they put things out on and then they have just a whole program overview and strand within the national site that provides resources specifically for librarians. Um, they do also have a Pinterest page. Um, and then I did provide a link to the Nebraska OER Commons. There is a school librarians group that is open. Um, and so if you make a free account there and you sign up, um, you can go to the Nebraska Hub, and if you scroll down to where our groups are located, you'll see it's red, um, the Nebraska School Librarians Group, and you can join that. There's um, materials that are starting to be curated um, 
in there, you're welcome to add materials uh, within that space. There's also discussions, so if you have questions, you can post them um, and hear from other librarians um, and whatnot. So there's a lot that can happen. If you want more training on OER Commons, again, we will have it at the conference this summer, as well as you might find it um, at other conferences um, throughout the state of Nebraska. We try, to, we try to get it to as many as we can. Um, and I think that's everything. Oh, good. And I didn't go over. Were there any uh, last minute questions or? <laughs> no, perfect timing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anybody have any questions you want to ask of Dorian before we wrap things up? Go ahead and type into your um, question section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, as you mentioned, the slides here, I've already got them linked off of our page for um, this show. And uh, all of the links that are on here that you've been seeing are all hot links. I've been actually going to them behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of helpful. I, I don't have time for that, but I, I want you to go there. <laughs> yeah, so when you go into those slides, you'll actually have hot links. You can just click on right away and it'll open up a new, a new tab that will have the link to um, the conference, the different pages, the different resources and everything that she's mentioned today. Um, I was very glad to have you on um, to do this today. I know um, you'd mentioned that the Library Commission is working with this as a staff member. Um, Amanda Sweet, who is our technology innovation librarian, is the person who's involved with the Future Aid in Nebraska um, on behalf of the Library Commission and attending all of your, your meetings and sessions and whatnot. Um, so if anyone is wondering what more about what we're doing, I guess, involved with it or what she thinks of it, that would be the person to talk to at the Library Commission. Yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't look like anybody is typing in any questions. So right. um, we had a few during the show, but um, I think that's great. Um, this is great information. We're going to have it all out there. Um, and as things go on with this, because this is an ongoing project yes. and process and things are being worked on, um, I'm sure we will do more updates with you. Um, and maybe also with um, bringing in Amanda to talk about from the library point of view um, from what the library commission is doing. Um, so look for some other you know, uh, future shows, you know, updating on things like when you get all the statistics gathered together and when some of the projects have come you know, wrapped up or uh, updates that need to be done. Um, this is an ongoing thing. This isn't just a one time, you know, this is how to make sure everyone is, all the students are, are getting the great education that they need. Absolutely, yes, and we'll, we'll continue to work at it, slowly but surely. Yes. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't look like anybody had any questions, so I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen okay. awesome. now to wrap up, and I can show you here. There we are, is it going? Yeah. Um, here I've put the link in to that, uh, to open up the slides there, and there you go, and you can click on anything in here, as I said. Uh, and it will bring up a, a uh, link that you can then click on and it opens up a new, and there's the first one there. So, yeah. And I was looking at this, I was looking at the actual information about the conference coming up too. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. We are recording, as I said, and it will be on our main page. Uh, thank you very much, Duran, for being with us. Yeah, today. thanks for having me. Like I said, I definitely want to keep up with you and, and get more updates as we're going through this. Absolutely. Um, it will be, um, today's show will be here in our archives or at the very bottom here of the screen, right underneath our upcoming shows. This was the most recent one. Uh, we'll have a link to the recording and the presentation is already there. And we'll just add a link to the recording that should be done and wrapped up by the end of the day today. Um, everyone who attended this morning and registered, I'll send you a link that you can use to get directly to that when I've got it all um, done and ready up there. Um, I'll be joining us next week when we're talking about um, internet access, improving internet access in libraries. Um, the Toward Gigabit Libraries project is a new thing that has just become available for libraries to use to check out on what their, how their technology is, how their internet is, and what they can do to improve it. Carson Block, who's the creator of this, a uh, library technology consultant, will be with us. And Tom Rolfus from the um, Nebraska Information Technology Commission and our own Holly Woltz from here at the Nebraska Library Commission are also both involved in this project. Um, they'll all be here with me um, next week to talk about that. So if you're looking about in how to, you can get um, 
better or faster internet in your library, please do sign up for that one. That's next week. Uh, also, since we were talking about um, Amanda, she's been doing a series, a couple of shows, or she's the one that a week after that, Ethics Behind Emerging Technology. Um, on February 13th, she did a session on what is emerging technology, and then the next not next week, the week after, she'll have a follow-up about the ethics behind it. So if you want to know more about emerging technology and what's going on with that, which is also related to all the digital Nebraska things, future in Nebraska, um, take a look at the recording of our previous show and then her upcoming one. Um, and then the one I mentioned that Beth Cavish is doing, here it is on our schedule, April 10th. What is OER? Outstanding Extraordinary Raw Materials? No? Yes? Partially? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Beth Cavish will be here to talk about that. So uh, serendipitously, we had things on our schedule related to what you were talking about today. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all related. Yes, so, it is. <laughs> all very important. So definitely uh, sign up for any of those upcoming shows that we have. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. You can see I've got a link here, and our Facebook page is here. We post updates to thing here. Um, reminders, here's a reminder to log in today's show. When our recordings are available, we have them up on here. We post the ready. Um, so if you um, are a big Facebook user and do like use it, <coughs> excuse me, uh, please do give us a like over there. Other than that, that wraps up today's show. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Dorian, for being here with me this morning. Yeah, thank you. And hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>